Good evening, comrades and friends. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let me first get started with uh, who I am uh, and, and how did I end up in the Army and Vietnam. Uh, I was, I enlisted in the United States Army. Um, I didn't want to get drafted. I didn't want to die in Vietnam. I, I knew I would go there. Um, but I volunteered to see what it was like, uh, to see what this country was doing, what the United States Pentagon and its, its bourgeois politicians were doing in a country that uh, a lot of people never heard of. And of course, now it's different. Um, I, I enlisted in 1966. I went to language school in Monterey, California, and um, I was given Russian, uh, the Russian language as my assignment, but I switched to, to Vietnam, to the Vietnamese language, because I, wanted, I basically wanted to go and see what it was like, uh, like I said before. And I'm not sorry for that. Look, look, look at what happened. Look, look where I am now. OK. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm fighting against imper US imperialism the same system that sent me over and 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 uh, 500 and at one time 543,000 US troops were in Vietnam at the height of, uh, of uh, in 19 uh, by 1972 um, uh, where was I stationed well I was stationed in Vietnam I was stationed in a place called Phu Bai which was right near the provisional capital, old provisional capital of Way, about six or seven miles southeast of it. Um, and I got there right after the Tet Offensive in 1968. Uh, and I saw on a trip, like a class trip, that would t I went up on a, in a truck to see the damage of the Citadel um, at that time, and it was it was unbelievable. It was um, the damage was just incredible. Uh, whoever the, the people were, um, a, a lot of people were destitute and um, homeless, and it was just a, a terrible situation. And I went back and visited the Citadel, and it is ninety nine percent completed, reconstructed, um, and it was just one of the highlights of the trip was to see from, from for 50 years, almost to the day of when I saw it and, and, and when I revisited it. Okay, um, the trip itself. Um, I have a slide, we have a slideshow, and, but I'll, first of all, let me, let me just, um, the, the Vietnam 50th Anniversary Commemoration Peace Tour. At one time, um, they, it started with 40, but by the time we got down to Ho Chi Minh City, which, better know, which was known as Saigon, we had 47 people. Uh, people, uh, seven, six or seven people joined us in, the, in, uh, the, in My Lai, in, uh, or Son Mi, for the 50th anniversary commemoration of the massacre. And I'll get into that. Um, for the seventh year, Vietnam's Hoa Binh, which means peace in, in uh, Vietnamese, chapter 160 of Veterans for Peace, uh, hosted a, a three-week insider tour of a former um, war-torn country that is now a nation of peace and beauty, Vietnam. The land is beautiful, the beaches, white sand, and palm trees are inviting. The mountains rugged and resilient, as are the people. The Vietnamese will welcome us with warm embraces and generous spirits, as you will see. Okay. Um, the introduction to the tour, um, uh, chapter 160 is the only American veterans organization with members living 
and working in Vietnam and vets and associate members in the U.S. Our mission is to address the legacies of the America's War. We contribute uh, to the recovery still underway from the war experience, uh, consequences. Veterans and their families struggling, struggling to be safe from unexploded, uh, unexploded ordnance. The tragedy of Agent Orange and dioxin and poverty, which is still a burden. And um, now um, we're ready for the um, slideshow. Okay. The um, but we, uh, uh, next slide. Okay, we visited basically. Okay. We visited um, five, uh, mainly five places. Uh, there was there were other places that we did, like Dong Ha, which would be uh, right around here, um, uh, and that's um, that, that's where the cemetery. But I'll get to that also. We landed in Hanoi um, on March. This trip started on March 4th in Hanoi, and it uh, proceeded to go to um, Wei, which is right where I was stationed. I actually saw I actually saw the entrance, and it's now a lot different. It's now a warehouse complex. Before it was a lot different. Three gigantic antennas, signal antennas. Um, uh, for uh, communication to intercept um, North Vietnamese Army at the time, the Vietnamese Army and the uh, Viet Cong, which it means uh, Vietnamese Communist forces, uh, sending signals that we would in, that the United States, uh, that the Army security would would intercept, and I would be translating documents and sending them out to field units. Um, this is one of the regrets that I had that I contributed to um, killing Vietnamese people and also American soldiers. Okay, then proceeded down to Da Nang and then Son Mi is My Lai. Uh, My Lai is a um, actually a hamlet. The Son Mi is a complex of, 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 of villages uh, in the same area. It's in Quang, sorry it's not a detailed map, but it's in Quang Ngai province. The, they call it the southeast coast. Now this is the South China Sea here. Okay. Um, this is Laos and Cambodia would be next there. And, and we were just at one point uh, just a few kilometers from the Laotian border on the trip, um, and this is and the last stop was Ho Chi Minh City, and um, that was um, another that was a, a, another part of the trip. Okay, um, next slide. Okay, this is. This is the the Wall Remnants Museum, and we were there for the opening of an exhibit, um, and it's in Ho Chi Minh City, on GI and veteran anti-war activists. Uh, there was also a one-day conference. Okay, the next slide. Okay. Okay. These are three anti-war veterans. Susan Schnall, who is a, um, an anti-war nurse who dropped leaflets from a plane in 1968. She, she, was, a, she's an, uh, she was a naval officer. And um, for this action about trying to stop the war, she was given six months hard labor in prison. Michael Wong, a military resistor who resisted going, and J.J. Johnson, who was a member of the Fort Hood Three. And 
I was really flabbergasted by his testimony. His consciousness was so developed about anti-war, about not going, and I certainly wish that I had developed that way. But again, wishing is one thing, and doing is another. Um, okay, ne next slide. Okay, as you may know, this is Terry Klug. He is a, a member of the... Uh, this, these were posters on the wall. This is part of the exhibit. And this is the late Andy Stapp, uh, a founding member, really, of the American Servicemen's Union. And Terry, who led a, a, a struggle, a, a rebellion in, at Fort Dix, I believe, and, and, um, and started, and, and, and a fire was set and all sorts of stuff and resisting this war. This, this horrible situation, and it was just wonderful to see these photos. It was, oh, I know them. You know, so, okay, and I also handed out the bond when I got to Fort, my last uh, duty assignment at Fort Meade, Maryland. Um, I, I did not see the bond in Vietnam. It just, it was really hard to receive it if you had nobody else, you know, involved. Okay, next slide, please. Okay. Um, sorry. The, um, these two slides show Vietnamese veterans with two F uh, Veterans for Peace members. The Vietnamese began the meeting by citing the 50th anniversary uh, of, me, of the My Lai Massacre in 1968. Uh, Anne Wright, who is not in these pictures, Anne Wright is, is a former, uh, she resigned her, her commission and, and, and left the service after, um, tw I forget, 29 years. She was a colonel, a full bird colonel. And, an anti, and she's now an anti-imperialist veteran, apologized for the American role in the massacre and, and, in, and, and other massacres in Vietnam, which was, you know, what it was all about, and asked the Vets for Peace, and the Vietnamese asked the Vets for Peace to help locate the remains of 300,000 missing in action uh, comrades. Um, we then shook hands and hugged each other, and we all said we are friends. Now, um, let me just tell you something. People had spoken, they were allowed, we, were, we spoke, the Vietnamese, the Vietnamese veterans spoke, and they would tra the translators, the translators were tremendous, and w we all expressed how we felt. And uh, I just had to say that I'm glad you, I'm glad you won. I'm glad you won. It was such a great feeling to know that we can remit, we, we are friends and, and same struggle, same fight. Okay, and it just, it was just I, probably the highlight of the trip for me anyway, was to, to hug, you know, people that I really, I had nothing against, you know, ever, but again, <laughs> it just I was caught up in in in, in my life uh, about not knowing not being able to resist what I knew was wrong that's the best way I can say it uh, okay next slide please okay um, this was at this was in Ho Chi Minh City at uh, one of the uh, I think the final lunch and this um, Don T. Ngoc Tue is a, a retired colonel, okay, who, as a teenager in 1966, fought against the U.S. in the jungles of, of Vietnam. She is now a poet and a, a warrior writer in, for the Viet, in, in Vietnam. And um, basically, it was real easy to talk with and and just an, another friend and you know I, it just was it, it, there was a picture of her with a rifle okay in the, you know uh, as a, a photograph 
And it just showed her how, how young she was. I mean, she was, thir she was 13 years old in this photo, and she was fighting she was for the liberation forces. Um, ne next, next slide. Okay, this is at the Chung Son Cemetery, military cemetery. Uh, in um, it, it means Long Mountain, and there are 10,000 graves here. Uh, you just see a number of them. Uh, the graves primarily that I saw were uh, soldiers who were born around the same time I was. So they were fighting. They were great. They were. They were, they were killed by American forces. Uh, I also saw one of uh, the ones that were, um, that were born in uh, the late 30s, which meant, or, or middle 30s, which meant that they fought to be uh, against the, uh, with the Viet Minh, against the French, the French imperialism. Um, and also against Japanese imperialism. Okay. Um, Next slide, please. Okay, these are more these are more Vietnamese veterans, and this is Anne Wright, right here. And um, again, we uh, you know we hugged each other, and and there was a ceremony, and um, a very solemn one about for the for the ones that have di that died, and you know. Unfortunately, my Vietnamese was not up to par, and it was very hard to speak, and there was a language. And if you wanted to speak, we had guides, um, and, um, and they would translate, you know, um, our feelings and their feelings and stuff, and it was really something. Okay, ne next slide. Okay, here was the greeting committee. This should have been first, but that's besides. These are school children that spoke perfect English. <laughs> it was just amazing. And um, this young girl asked me my name, my age, and my telephone number. <laughs> so it was just, uh, So I said, "Well, how about how about my email address? Maybe that would be better." Okay, but um, it was just. I, I guess you could say a dog, adorable. It was just really tremendous. That was our greeting committee. The, the most I could get into the photo. There were about five more. Um, they were so. They were, We were so glad to see them, and I, and vice versa. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, this is at the uh, My Lai. Memorial shows somebody protesting a woman and a, wo a woman cowering or, or trying to help. Actually, a woman, uh, somebody, uh, I guess, a woman cowering to save her child and somebody being trying to be saved by somebody else um, while the bullets were flying. This is a pagoda in the back um, where there are quite a few pagodas. Uh, Buddhism is the major religion in, in Vietnam. Uh, but, and the day before we went and, 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 and we commemorated um, the suffering. Next slide. Okay, this is actually I don't know whether you remember the photo. I don't know if you remember the photo. I'm sorry. Um, of, of like in a ditch where there were numerous bodies. And this is where it was, right there. Um, there was now, the land, the land was being cultivated at this moment that I took the picture. But that's where the actual uh, large portion, portion of the massacre took place. Next, next slide. Oh, these are flowers that 
were um, obtained by the uh, Me Life uh, Foundation, Peace Foundation, and um, Vets for Peace. Vets for Peace, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, it was quite, and, and, and the, the, pagoda, the, the pagoda is behind that. That was there on the day, the actual March 16th, 1960. Uh, of 2018, that was the, the the actual day. Okay, next slide. Okay, um, <laughs> this is at the ex anti-war exhibit at the uh, in the in Som at, at Mi Lai. Um, does anybody know who that is? Okay. Deirdre. Uh, I don't know. I thought maybe it would would be Deirdre. Could this be Anne? I'm not sure. Okay, but this is. Um, they had pictures of prote of protesters. <laughs> it was just something. Um, uh, mostly, you know, Vietnamese protest. You know, people protesting the Vietnamese people protesting the war, and also obviously the Americans. And um, I thought maybe um, somebody would recognize who somebody in that picture. Okay. Next slide. Okay. Now this is <laughs> right. It, I I couldn't, you know, bear not to mention Ho Chi Minh. Okay, this is a bust of Ho Chi Minh. This was in the um, the Me Life Foundation, the Peace Foundation uh, Center, and um, okay. Um, each person person was given a T-shirt. This is Me Life Peace Foundation. Wow. Okay. And um, the foundation. Okay. The uh, a a bust of Ho Chi Minh adorns the meeting room and the Mi Lai Peace Foundation. The main activities are supporting families of the Mi Lai victims during the war, victims of Agent Orange and children of, of war veterans. Uh, grant scholarships support occupation training for, uh, for children of war, of war victim, victims' families and of veterans, and also promote progressive trends in the world as peacekeeping, environmental protection, and responsible tourism, uh, and promote traditional cultural values. Um, that was quite, there was quite a meeting. We had like 100 people in a room that was a lot smaller than this room. <laughs> but we got things done. And um, we said that, we, we, uh, we Vets for Peace gave $1,000 to the foundation. That was part of the, um, um, the situation. Each member had a... that we visited. Next slide. Okay, um, this, this uh, young girl was slightly uh, disabled because of Agent Orange. And um, I might as well get into what Agent Orange is and what it can do. Okay, um, Agent Orange is a chemical defoliant with dioxin. Now, um, a chemical defoliant was used in Vietnam to eliminate the cover, like trees and bu and, and uh, bushes and stuff, so that they could see the so-called enemy, so the U.S. forces could could see and and kill better. 
That's basically what it was. They added a chem the 37 chemical companies added something called dioxin, which was unnecessary, but what it did was worse than the Agent Orange, you know, the chemical itself, because it created birth defects and cancers, and it's now in its fourth generation of damage, of damaging the people. Um, and a lot of the programs were, um, as I will get into, uh, <clears throat> okay, the Friendship Village, this was in Hanoi. Uh, this, young, this young girl um, was good with handicrafts and, and making stuff, and um, they were selling uh, like um, little wallets that they, would, that they could make and, and stuff like that. And, and um, the Friendship Village is, is a residential, medical, and vocational center for Agent Orange, uh, Agent Orange victims, including, uh, the Viet including Vietnamese war veterans and, and their disabled children and grandchildren. Uh, it's, in, it's interesting to note that uh, unless um, all male veterans, U.S. Amer American veterans, um, their children and grandchildren are not uh, taken care of. Uh, if they are affected by Agent Orange, the VA in the United States of America does not take care of children and grandchildren, only the veterans. In Vietnam, that's it, totally uh, the opposite. I mean, it, uh, the, uh, the veteran is taken care of, and the children and grandchildren are taken care of the best way they know how. Uh, just. Uh, ne next slide. Okay, th this woman, Mrs. Ka, I remember the name, is an 89-year-old woman caring for a 20-something-year-old uh, man who was a victim, both are victims of Agent Orange. This woman uh, escaped into the jungle and was affected by a drop of Agent Orange from a C-130 or a C-123, I'm not sure. They, they, they would drop it from planes. 19 million gallons of Agent Orange was, uh, were dropped in Vietnam. 19 million gallons. Um, and ordinance was more than what they dropped in World War II on Vietnam, but that's another story. This woman cared for a 20-year-old. Now, this is what it concerns a lot of people. There are no nursing homes in Vietnam. If this woman dies first, which the odds say that that's will, that will happen, um, there is nobody to take care of her but the villages. There are other hamlets away from here, uh, I mean near there, and they would, they would have to bear the burden of taking care of this, <coughs> of this 20 year old um, man. So one of these stipulations of a, a, a bill put out by Barbara Lee, um, a progressive from uh, California would be to build nursing homes in Vietnam so that other people, other villages would not be burdened with taking care um, of people who are affected by, by, by Agent Orange, you know. Um, so, uh, she was really something. <laughs> 89 years old, taking care of somebody that was 20-something, and both the victims of Agent Orange. I think uh, she lost her husband during the, the, the 60s or 70s because of Agent Orange. Uh, next slide. Uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> this is the Hearts of Way Farm Animal Project, a poverty alleviation project which provides either um, a cow water buffalo, which is a beast of burden in Vietnam, or a pig. Uh, to Agent Orange affected farm families in Way or in the 
Alawi Valley. Now, Alawi Valley is the one that's very near the Laotian border, and it's in Tuatian province, and that's where Wei is, and um, the, it's the uh, thin part of the map that I showed you at the beginning. It's, it's, it's only about like 20 kilometers across from, Leo, from, Leo, from Laos to the uh, Chow, uh, South China Sea. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, um, I'm sorry, in Tuatian province. By partnering with Wei, with Wei University and the Hearts of Wei program to fund uh, the purchase of the uh, of the animal training uh, in care materials for the animal shelter feed and and veterinary care. Um, these are all like p friendship projects that the Vets for Peace has funded. Um, n uh, next slide. This is a uh, uh, children in who are somewhat disabled by Agent Orange, uh, and. Um, they come from all walks of life, basically. And, um, and then this was like in a pagoda. It's really you walk in, and there, there are the, the um, you know, the, the prayer um, where people would pray, and and then you would have um, the orphanage and where they're taken care of. Um, okay, n next slide. Next slide, please. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, these are um, children that gr greeted us at the. Um, uh, okay, like I said, one of the bigger other large problem is unexploded ordnance. Now, Project Renew is um, okay. This was a greeting uh, uh, committee, um, and um, they provided us with. Um, you know, entertainment and they and singing and dancing. And um, we visited the mine center where all they showed us uh, various weapons that they had confiscated. And it was quite, you know, you can just imagine what they, howitzer shells, cluster bombs, um, all, they all have been detonated, um, uh, which is what their goal is, is to detonate and, um, okay. Okay, children's eyes. Um, nearly 40 years after the Vietnam War ended, unexploded ordnance continues threatening daily life and activities and activities of the people of Quang Tri Province, which was the is the northernmost part before the, the, uh, the south of the what was called the DMZ, the demilitarized zone. Now it's just one nation. So, um, um, born and grown up after the war, children are tragically at risk because of their limited awareness of the dangers of unexploded ordnance. Since 1975, there have been 3,226 children and teenagers killed and injured by um, unexploded ordnance, accounting for 46 percent of total victims in the province, notably of which nine, 992 accidents w were caused by unexploded cluster munitions. They're, it's like the size of a baseball and they shoot out these plachettes that are de so deadly. Um, um, and I, I went to a factory in San Jose, California, and I saw them being, the little fl uh, fl uh, flechettes being made. Um, um, searching for scrap metal and, and, and herding livestock in contaminated areas are among the leading causes of these accidents. Okay, the mine risk education drawing campaigns for children are one of the various community-based um, activities conducted by Project Renew with special attention to local pupils. As a result, more than 20,000 paintings by children from three districts. Okay, um, uh, okay, and the slogan is keep away from unexploded ordnance for a better life. That's the slogan that they have, that they have, uh, uh, that they use. Now, um, uh, next, uh, next slide, please. Okay. 
as has been demonstrated in Quang Tri province, even as the amount of ordnance discovered and destroyed, incre uh, and destroyed increases, the number of accidents, inquiries, and deaths uh, go down. Um, continues to go down. Safety is the key. The people inform the team um, uh, whom, uh, who, uh, who do the training in safely detonating the UXO, uh, unexploded ordnance. Since 2013, Project Renew has prosthetics and orthotics, mo mobile outreach pro has a, a program for prosthetics. Okay, this is a field where we were. And in this corner was an unexploded ordnance, and the team at work detonating it. They safely detonated it, and I didn't. I, I basically didn't see. I didn't. I couldn't flash the camera qu quick enough to see the explosion. But it doesn't matter. Uh, we were standing behind here, and um, and that's basically that was a whole morning. Actually, it took them almost an hour to detonate it. Um, they set it up very, you know, nobody got hurt, obviously, and so there's a lot of vigilance in getting these or, these UXOs w where if you see it, don't touch it, contact the team, um, and they will come and take it. And this was a how, uh, ne next slide, and this was the shrapnel um, from the, uh, I, we believe it was a, a, a howitzer shell, 105 millimeter. Okay, th this is, this is some of the ordnance that pictures of it um, that they captured, that the Vietnamese captured, and um, this is a, this is not a cluster bomb. I, I don't know what they basically are. Um, this was a some kind of a, a mine that they uncovered. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Is that it? Uh, okay. Okay. That's the end of the slideshow, but um, I have other. Okay. Just one. Um, I'm going to. Let's see. Okay. Facts about Vietnam. Okay. Former President Clinton ended the trade embargo of Vietnam in 1995. Now, if you know your, your dates, this is 20 years after, okay. The Vietnamese won, and there was still a trade embargo for 20 years. Now, Clinton went to Vietnam, and he resisted the war, but I'm not going to get into, I mean, you know, he was, he still pre, he was president for eight years, so we know what he did. But he was against, basically against the war, and the Vietnamese, some of the Vietnamese people that, you know, that were in the friendship, they looked up to him because he had a program that, you know, that how successful it was, I'm not quite sure. But uh, again, he, he didn't have crocodile tears. They were real tears. He was very upset about what, but it just goes to show you that 20 years after, <laughs> it's just, I, that I did not know. Okay, now, um, one eighth of the country was sprayed by Agent Orange. That's the 19 million gallons. Um, three million people are affected in one way or in another uh, from Agent Orange. Okay, also some good news. It, a, um, a fetus uh, can be, uh, it can be detected in a fetus if it's gonna, if it's gonna be affected by age, uh, well, birth defects. Uh, and abortion is, is possible in Vietnam. Um, okay, the Agent uh, um, Orange birth defects are now in the fourth generation. It is predicted that there'll be seven. Now, I don't know how true that is, but it's in the fourth generation now of, of being affected in, Viet in Vietnam. And how to combat and what they're doing Okay, hot water on the hot, the places being, have, that have been sprayed, some of them, 
uh, being thermally with hot water being sprayed and the areas um, they look like they're clean but there's really no way to know if they've, they've actually been completely de decontaminated from the Agent Orange. It's, it's not clear. Okay, that's, that's all we know. And it takes funding to, to do this. And when we were there, there was one at Longbin, which is right near Ho Chi Minh City, that had just been done, um, that had just been sprayed with hot water and, and chemicals to combat. It, it, it's one of the worst, it's a, a terrible thing. It just, the, the, the war is still going on in Vietnam. That, that's what I'm obviously trying to say. And, okay, um, but things are, with Vets for Peace and other organizations, you know, helping out, obviously, it, it's slow, but, you know, um, things, I mean, people care about their fellow man and woman, women. Okay. I'm not, let's see, I'm not, okay, this is a quote by um, Philip Jones Griffiths who was Welch, or was Welch, the Vietnamese war photojournalist. Uh, okay, I'm not particularly interested in figures, but in Washington, D.C., there's a memorial to U.S. deaths in the Vietnam War, and it's 150 yards long. If the same memorial was built for the Vietnamese, it would be nine miles long. Okay, so... That would be from the George Washington Bridge to the to the village. That's how long that that wall would be. Um, uh, I said before that that no benefit uh, the children and grandchildren of of uh, Vietnam veterans, American Vietnam veterans, um, cannot be. Um, cared for by the VA. Motor scooters are the main, um, the primary mode of transportation in Vietnam. This, it just, uh, there's as many, per capita, there's as many cars in America as there are motor scooters in Vietnam. In Saigon, it's complicated with, with full-size cars and motor scooters. So at, at real busy intersections in Ho Chi Minh City, there are traffic lights, but in Hanoi, there aren't very many. So you have to, you know, we were taught how to cross the street. Um, <laughs> it takes, you, you can't make any false moves. <laughs> you, if you're gonna go, then go and then continue on. So, it, you know, fortunately there were no, you know, disabilities, uh, just people with, you know, severe disabilities, that, that would have been, um, and it's not, it's, the accessibility is, is poor, unfortunately. Um, we were in the old quarter in Hanoi, and it was practically, uh, the, the, the streets were, uh, in disrepair. The sidewalks were in disrepair all over, especially in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, um, let's see. Oh, uh, two-wheel bicycles are popular in Hanoi. Um, uh, they have, there's a 93 percent literacy rate in Vietnam. Um, and um, I think that um, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop now, and uh, I thought I'd give you a pretty good picture of the trip. It's totally it, it, from the experience of being there in a war and fighting on the wrong side, uh, and contributing to their uh, trying to contribute to their demise. It was so different to come back and being greeted by the people. Of, you know themselves, you know maybe third or fourth generation, but still, um, it was just a, 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 tr a fabulous experience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for that. Um, 
incredible report on the uh, extraordinary resistance of the Vietnamese people, and it's good for us all to know that in many ways the